We're talking about PAs. Oh, PAs are very important, you know, for the ADs and for the director. Basically, the ADs work for the director, and the PAs work for the ADs. And we're the first perimeter. You know, PAs set, you know, the boundaries for, for everybody that's not a part of the team. You know, they keep order, they keep the perimeter safe. And, um, and when I was a PA, I PA um, tons of films, tons, you know. And, um, but I always had a, a, a system director's mentality when I was a PA. And that's what, and I, because I always understood and I always wanted to be a filmmaker as a PA. There's a difference. Some film, some PAs don't really want to really be filmmakers, and some PAs want to be filmmakers. So you have a different mentality. So I saw how important it was to be a production assistant because I wanted to be a director, and I wanted as a director to have PAs with passion and fire working for me. So that's what I I, I try to exhibit: passion and fire, and work really hard for a director because that's that's who I'm working. I'm working for a director, so I really respected that and I didn't take it lightly as a production assistant. So I worked really hard and stayed focused. And it, it was an easy transition to be an assistant director because of that. So how do you become a PA? I started as an intern. Sometimes you have to work for free because people want to they want to be familiar with people they work with, you know. So it's, it's so fast paced that you don't really have time to learn how people are, but you know, so a lot of times you have to work for free, you know, uh, on the film in order to maybe get hired on the next film or project as a production assistant. And then, you know, you just start off as an additional, they might hire you for big days, you know, when, you know, and I work every day, but it's, it's definitely, it definitely is tough because it's sporadic. You know, sometimes there's a lot of stuff going on and sometimes there's nothing going on. So it's definitely, it, it, it tests you, you know, and lets you, You'll figure out if you really want to do this, so you don't really want to do it. How important is a formal education to you in this field? I don't think I don't think a formal education is really that important because everything that I, I went to, I went to college, I majored in sociology and I minored in film. But once I got in the movie set, all that went right out the window. It's so it's so different, you know. You need the hands-on experience. You need it. It doesn't matter how many years you spent in college, it's, it's totally different. You know, you, you, you could be graduating from NYU tomorrow, and the day after, you, you're getting coffee for somebody. That's just the reality of, of the, film, the film industry. It's not, it, it's not, I mean, it's nice to go to college and major in it and learn as much as you can, but, but don't think that that's going to be your saving grace. You know, your saving grace is meeting people, getting experience, and getting out there. Who are your in major influence in the film industry? Um, some of my major influences, of course, Spike. He's my teacher, mentor, you know, for the last 15 years. Um, you know, Martin Scorsese, I just got a couple of filmmakers that I really admire. You know, uh, Martin Scorsese, you know, John Singleton, you know. And, and I just I just like the type of films that they make. You know, Spike is at the top just because, you know, I'm close to that camp and just he is one of the most efficient directors that I've ever worked with, you know, just in terms of his game is really, really tight, you know, and um, and he's, he's a master. He's a master at making films. He made 20 films, you know, 20 years. That's, you know, that's monumental. Most filmmakers in general, whether black or white, haven't made that many films. Now, do you predominantly work in one genre of film? Do you work on features or commercials? Like, what do you predominantly do? Or is it a mixture? Most, mostly I work on features, you know. Uh, Spike also does a lot of commercials, so I work on a lot of commercials. I used to work on a lot of music videos, but I kind of got away from it because I really, I, I don't really like working on videos, but features is what I mostly do. You know, but I'll do anything. You know, I just, I just like to be creative. And would you, would you um, encourage other young people to get into this business? Um, I would definitely encourage young people to get into the business if this is what they want to do. You know, you have to have a passion for it because it's not easy. You know, it, you got to be in it for the long haul. But it's definitely rewarding. You know, I've been lucky enough to travel. You know, all over the country. You know, I've been able to, lucky and blessed to work 
and meet some beautiful people. You know, so I, I definitely think it is an excellent experience if you want to do something creative. But you have to think about longevity. You know, it's not going to be easy. You know, but it, but it definitely pays off in the end. As a ballpark figure, about how much does an assistant director make in one day on a set, on an average set? Um, I mean, usually between three fifty and five hundred dollars a day on a set. Whether it's a music video, commercial, you know, and DGA directors gonna have rates that that you have to get paid when you work on commercials. So that's the, pretty much the standard, you know. Are many blacks in the field? Um, I mean, I, I, I pretty much know every black assistant director in New York, and I, I think I've almost worked with all of them. I, I probably worked with 95% of the black assistant directors in New York, you know, um, and it's not, you know, it's maybe, I would say maybe 15, 20, you know, it's not that many, you know, they, the numbers are growing, but there's not that many assistant directors, black assistant directors in New York, but, um, but it's just, you know, the film industry as a whole is tough on um, black filmmakers, you know. It's, it's, a lot, it's a lot harder. Spike Lee is one of the only film sets that you can go to and you'll see at a minimum 50-50. 50% 50, 50 black people, 50% white people. You know, most, the majority of the films that you go on, you might see two or three, if that many black people on the set of 200 people. So it's, it's, it's definitely something that you know, um, that has to change. I mean, I, I don't really have a step-by-step -step plan for people that want to get in the industry, but there are a couple of things that are really important for you to make it and be successful. You know, um, I think preparation is one of the, preparation and research is one of the most important things, or two of the most important things that people need to work on. You know, be prepared. You know, be prepared, you know, know what you want to do, do the research to find out, you know, how other people that's doing what you want to do, how they got there, you know, um, that's that's really important and just really, you know, staying focused and staying really, really, um, you know, I mean, the focus is, is, is really important because it's like it's so distracting, you know, and you have to really, you know, make a make a um, a plan of where you want to go. If you want to get here, you got to okay, say these are the steps that I need to take to get there and you really have to follow through. You really have to follow through and you really have to just, it's, 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 it's a 24-hour job. You know, if you want to do film, sometimes it's unfortunate, but sometimes you have to sleep, eat, and drink film. You know, from the time you get up, from the time you go to sleep, everything has to be related to what you want to do. You can't say you want to do it and then you, it's not a, it's not a novelty, it's not a hobby. You know, the career, so you really have to sacrifice and put the time in. Or else you, you, you're not going to get where you want to go, you know. Because you're never going to get where you want to go as fast as you want to get where you want to go. But you'll get there in time, but it, it, it's about time. It's a part of a journey. It's, it's nothing that's going to happen overnight. So you got to be committed to it. So thanks a lot, Mr. Boogie. Thank you, you know, just, you know, thank you for your time.